Hi, it's uh, Mike Stevenson here. So today we're going to have a look at a feature in Serverless 360 which allows us to monitor Logic App connections. So we've got uh, four modules within Serverless 360. You can see them on the screen here. The one we're looking at today is this one here, Business Applications. And we're going to look at a use case based around this scenario here. So I've got my Logic App. And if I want to talk to Dataverse or SharePoint, I use one of these components, which is called a, an API connection. So these are connectors in the Logic App, and they'll um, they basically front end an API. And in this case, I've got a Logic App connection that can talk to Dataverse. I've also got one that can talk to SharePoint. So in the Logic App ecosystem, we know we've got... Um, you know, I think there's something like 800 odd connectors apparently nowadays. So there's lots of different cloud connectors available. And the problem that you might get is, let's say we've got this scenario here. My Logic App's working, and in this case, the the common one we have a problem with, with is this SharePoint one. So what happens is, you configure the connector here. Behind the scenes, it's talking to Azure AD. When you set the connector up, it'll get a username password from you. It'll get a token and it'll continue to refresh that token. And then when the Logic App calls the connector, it'll maybe upload a file to SharePoint. Now, the problem that we get typically with a SharePoint connector is maybe this, um, this account that you're using here, you get a problem sort of there talking to get a, an updated token. Maybe the password's changed. Maybe, maybe uh, the account's expired or something like that. But it, there's various scenarios we've seen where this connector stops being able to get a token and it goes into an errored state. Now, the same can be true on other tokens, depending on various sort of things where the connector can go into to an errored state, depending on what the integration with that end application is. And the problem we have is that until the Logic App here runs and calls the connector, we don't know that there's an error. So it may be, let's say you've got a once a month process that uploads <coughs> uploads files to SharePoint. When that runs, it'll error, but it might have been that the connector has been broken for a couple of weeks and you, you just haven't realized. So the idea here is that we want to um we want to introduce serverless 360 and with serverless 360 we'll be able to monitor these connections, check they're in a healthy state, and then if there's a problem, we can raise an alert to tell somebody to go and look at the connector before the Logic app goes to use them. And, um, and then ideally you would, um, you know, you'd be able to sort of early react to that issue before the Logic app breaks. If we have a look at this feature in action now, you can see here in my Serverless 360 business application portal, I've got my tree structure um, where I've mapped the resources to a model that suits how I want to operate my Azure infrastructure. And you can see I go into the enterprise integration area, I've got this Logic App Management node. And here I've added some resource graph queries. So this is how we um, we can kind of implement this feature. So we added a capability in Serverless 360 for you to use a resource graph query. We can then use that in a dashboard to visualize um, the results of the query, but we can also monitor that query as well. So here I've got this um, query about Logic App connectors that are broken. You can see it ran the query and here's the results as a visual format. So I've got about 13 connect, um, connectors that are connected, 16 that are ready. If you click on the query bit here, you can see um, here's the resource graph query that I'm using. So I'm looking for resources where the type is Microsoft.web slash connections. I then extend out the overall status and display name. And then I'm going to just summarize the count of them by um, status, which is how I get this, this result here. So I can see the, you know, the ones that are, or the number of them that are connected and ready. Um, I can then create a, um, a monitoring query here. So if I go into the monitoring area, and I can go edit this. And I've basically got pretty much the same query where I'm saying, um, give me all the, uh, count the number of connectors where the status isn't connected already. And I'm just gonna summarize that. And I can create a condition. So I'm saying if there's, if there's more than zero, then create a warning. If there's more than one, create an error. 
you can see here I've just put a note so I'm saying um, you know if you get the alert coming out that this is broken this note would be in the email that your support users would get so I can say look here's here's what you I want you to do when you get this alert so I'm, I want you to go and check the, the state of them and they may need re-authenticating so I'm expecting when we get the summary count that will create a scalar value that we can test the result of to decide whether to trigger an alert or not and then this shows up here as my um, my monitoring query so I can go and um, you know, monitor for this and trigger the alerts based on it and, and really that's how easy it is to set up monitoring for all of the connectors now the one thing to bear in mind here is the query will be based on the, the service principle that the query is configured to run as so that'll be when you set your um, your logic app up um, it'll only see logic app connectors that that um, service principle has been given access to be able to see so if you've got connectors in another resource group or subscription that the connect connector uh, sorry that the service principle doesn't have our back access to they won't show up in your query but uh, it's really easy to set that up you just give it permission and it'll check them um, you can see with with this resource graph query so there's a lot we can do with it that helps the support team which is why we we added it so one of the things we can do is this querying for broken connectors but i can really easily query for any logic apps um, that are in a disabled state so I'm, I'm you know i've got 39 enabled here but i can easily configure monitoring to see if anything gets disabled raise an alert i can use it um for visualization scenarios it doesn't just have to be for monitoring i can say look here's one that shows me which logic app uses which connector which you may have seen me talk about on my blog previously how to write that custo query and finally one, one of the ones i quite like here is um all the logic apps that have a recurrence trigger um, how often do they run so you can see my my logic app list here you can see how often and at what time so that query you can see up here again you'll have probably seen this on my blog at some point so you can just use this query here to look for logic apps and then you extend out the trigger and if it's a recurrence trigger and, and you basically would end up with the results here that you can easily see so this is a great way when your support team gets a question like what um what logic apps run at what time of day it's so easy with serverless 360 using this feature to just give your support team a dashboard so they can easily go and check oh you know between one and two these are the logic apps that run if we have a service incident these might be affected so one last thing I wanted to show in the business application was what happens when an alert gets fired. So unfortunately, it's not that easy to trigger an alert um, by breaking a connector because usually it's the SharePoint or the Dataverse connectors or something where the authentications change triggers it into an error state. Uh, there are other occasions, but um, instead of me trying to um, hack one of my connectors to break it, what I've done, I've just added another query here so we've got one that just counts the number of resources um, that resource graph returns. And from a monitoring perspective, I know I've got 100 and uh, I think 143, um, I think at the minute. So because the alert's looking for 141, that'll trigger an alert. So it's an easy way for me to just trigger an alert to show what it would look like. Now, in the business application, the first thing we'll see is in the monitoring section an incident's going to um, show up here so you can see i've got a previous incident from yesterday um, i've got a, an incident now if i click on this i can see the problem is that the the um, test error in query is 143 greater than 141 so that's the alert that's fired um i can i've got a couple of actions i can do with the alert so i could acknowledge that we're looking at the alert i could put a comment here so we know that there's a, a problem at the moment and then when it's um, corrected I could close that alert when we're happy with everything and over here you would see that this query has gone into the error state and again we can click on this to see um, to see the you know the monitoring rules that are broken and if you've got your resource graph uh, sorry your um, service map set up if any of you so this is examples the resource graph queries but if it was a logic app a function or something else in the service map it would trigger showing you in red which um, resources in the broken state now we have notification channels in serverless 360 so when an alert fires 
in addition to the, the tree view lighting up over here to show there's a problem, in addition to the resources, you can um, trigger alerts out via notification channels. So over here, you can see I've got Teams set up. And then on the profile in the monitoring, I can also configure an email if I want to just have a one-off email for that subscription. We also have a bunch of other channels here so you can configure DevOps tickets. ServiceNow is a really popular one for a lot of our customers. And anything that's not listed here, you could do a, a webhook to trigger a logic app or something like that if you wanted to implement your own notification channel. Now, what I've done, because I've got an email and a Teams message coming out, here's an example of the email that came out showing me that I've got a violation on a business app. It tells me which business app it is. I can see here the... the um, you can see here the resource that's in the arid state and i've actually um back over here if we go back to the business app a moment so you would see in the monitoring i'd actually put a note here to tell the the user what to do when that happens so I, you know as, as the as your expert configuring what i want to happen and what my alert is i can say go and do something and in the alert down here, you would see that note appears in the email text. So if, if I had an alert that said, go and check this connector or something like that, I could put the details in here. And, um, and the user gets the notification. They can click to view the incident. Which will jump them straight into Serverless 360. So you can see we've got our alerts here. The one that I've acknowledged just before that we're looking at. And also in here, you can see in my Teams channel, I've got a, a notification that's fired just showing me, um, you know, that it was my query that's triggered in that logic app, uh, sorry, in that business application. And I've got my note here of, of what we want the user to do. So we can get some good notifications and um, management of incidents through Serverless 360. Thanks very much for listening to today's demo. Um, here's a QR code if you'd like to request a, um, a demo from our team. We'd love to have a chat with you about your scenarios for monitoring logic apps or anything else on Azure. Thanks for listening.